Hello guys, welcome back to another video. It is time for the long lost throwback Thursday. I know it has been quite some time, but I have been incredibly busy with the World Championship. Now, um, the top six was streamed on Sunday, and I, as I mentioned in my previous video, I was in the top six. Um, I will leave the result for that to my next video, which should be coming out Friday, maybe Saturday, we'll see. Uh, don't want to spoil that here, but in the theme of World Championships, I thought for this Throwback Thursday, it would be interesting to take a look at my three decks from the 2019 World Championship. Now, a few things that are worth noting before we get into here. One, I was not the best player at the game. I was not in the top five, not the top ten. I am sure if you asked, like, the top players in the game, or like, the devs, or anybody who knew anything about the game, to rank all of the players, I would be put probably in the bottom half every single time. Nobody knew who I was, other than just, I qualified rank 2 in the open qualifiers, but everybody who was everybody had previously qualified through ranked, and everyone sort of thought the open qualifiers players were just gonna get smoked. Um, so that is something that is worth noting. These decks are not, like, the meta. These decks are not, like, cutting-edge 2019 competitive lists. These are what I was doing with a very limited collection, and that's something we will see. Part of the reasons the decks look so weird is I had a very limited collection. Another part is I was just bad at deck building. Um, but also I just was missing a lot of cards. That's really the simple answer. Um... I really grinded out my full collection in the months following the World Championship. Um, so in this, not that good decks. Another very important thing is something we see is a lot of cards have been nerfed or buffed or changed or just are very, very different. However, there was a core fundamental rule of the game that was different back then, which was there was no elite limitations. You could run any elites in any decks. As, as long as it fit, like, the, you know, major, minor, 12 guides. Which meant you could run minor nation elites in the deck. And obviously people did that, because elites are pretty good. So, of the three decks for World Championship, only one is actually playable, because the other two required elites that were from the minor nation that I can't run anymore. Um, so, uh, just to quickly add on to this, um... I don't remember the format exactly, it wasn't bans, it wasn't, you had to win with all your decks, I think it was just you couldn't bring the same deck twice in a row, uh, and it was basically just play, I think it was a best of threes, and then best of fives with no bans, bring any deck. Um, if I remember correctly, I, I could be wrong about that. And I made it to the top 16, uh, shockingly, against all odds, um, before losing, and uh, I got in with this middle deck here, um, Air. This was my Britain-Japan air deck that carried me into the qualifications, um, and then it stopped performing particularly well. And I looked at it just now while getting these lists, and oh my goodness does it look terrible. Um, we'll take a look at it now, but it looks awful. Uh, so I was really relying on this German deck, which won me a couple games, but as we're about to see, is also a really terrible deck, and it, I think I lost like basically three times in a row with this. Um, it was rough. So, again, what does somebody with a limited collection who has to bring three decks do? They bring Germany-Soviet aggro. That's something that's not changed particularly much. You bring the decks with the Blitzkriegs and all of the, like, standard cost bl cheap Blitz cards. And that is what I did. I have, uh, the Zero Cost Blitzer, the SD, um, also known as the KFC, this used to be a 1-2, um, back when it took a nerf when Heinz got hit really hard. This used to be a 1-2, which made it significantly better. Um, Panzer A's, again, is just cheap Blitz tanks. Um, the 321sts, the point of this was to stick an infantry for 35T. You can play the 321st, and even if your opponent has, like, um, I don't know, a gunship mission, you got it to the front line, Awoken Giant, um, Desert Rats used to be, uh deal 2 damage. Even if they have any of those things, you still get the 1-1 one, one infantry left over. That's an infantry for 35T. 
and that is another unit to move to the front line for Blitzkrieg. That's another unit your opponent has to remove, and there wasn't a lot of effective AoEs in the game, so just these sort of sticky destruction effect units worked charms. Um, two iron from the north... It, I didn't own Enigma, as we will see. There's no Enigma in this deck, which meant I had no access to card draw. So I was basically just like, screw it, we're going all in. Um, this was definitely a mistake. I think even just throwing in a few more Blitz units would probably be better than this. But the idea of this deck was just like, sometimes it wins me games. And that's all I really need, because I'm going to be relying on air pretty heavily as my only real deck. Um, Fast Hines, another card that was nerfed by Hines meta. Um... This was previously uh, buff, give your German tanks plus two plus one anywhere on the board. They didn't have to be in the front line, so you would often actually just stack German tanks in the support line, um, and then you play fast times, and then you move them up and attack. Um, so units like the Panzer A with smokescreen, you could just leave it on board in your support line, not doing anything the entire time until you play fast times. Another card that was changed, um, Bloody Sickle. Now, it used to be zero cost, deal one damage to a ground unit. And then they did deal one damage to any unit, um, but it costs one. I'm not sure what it was at the time that I played this. Uh, I'm not exactly sure when that change happened. I believe this would have been zero cost, though. And again, the point of that is, without a lot of card draw, I want to be slightly more consistent. So a zero cost to draw a card is pretty good, um, especially when it might like take out a commando which could be theoretically really annoying because it's kind of acting as that non-existent AoE or even it's just clearing uh, cavalry regiments off of Japan decks. Um, zero cost cycle was insane, part of the reason they changed it. Uh, 35T, this was another card that behaved differently. Uh, it used to be a passive effect, has uh, minus one operation cost if you control an infantry rather than deployment, um, which meant you could play it on two by itself, and then you play an infantry on three, and that's the deploy, uh, operation cost goes down to zero. Or you play an infantry on one, you play 35T on two, and you attack with it, and then they kill the infantry, the uh, operation cost goes back up to one. Um, pretty interesting card. Uh, four copies of Flak. Um, now, I'm running three Blitzkriegs and Fast Hines, so again, this is just basically like a try to get as many units to the front line as possible for a Blitzkrieg. I was a really bad deck builder, but I did recognize the power of Blitzkrieg. I was like, this card's absolutely insane. You can end games so quickly, and there was very, very, very limited healing. So I was like, if I can just do a three-unit Blitzkrieg at any point in the game, I'm probably going to win that game. Um, so it was all about just getting as many units to the front line as quickly as possible. Now, 22nd Infantry was exactly the same as it is now. So you might be wondering, why wasn't I running two? And the answer is, I only owned one and I did not have the resources to craft a second. I think I actually crafted the only one I had while submitting decks. I had like a whole bunch of resources built up and was like, well, I might, might as well spend all of these uh, going into the World Championship. And I didn't have enough to craft an elite. That is how little I had. So I was like, well, if I can only craft a handful of specials, what do I want? I'm like, probably a 20 second. This deck needs at least some card draw. Um, tactical strikes. I honestly have no idea why these are here. I was probably just out of cards I thought were fine. Um, air was really popular, so like killing uh, swordfishes is pretty good. Um, yeah, uh, other than that, I mean, just some removal is fine. Pursuit didn't exist. Um, like, it's just there was not a lot of good cards. Um, with Soviet Ally, you don't have um, Sendai's like, you could get, like, get um, really locked out by a couple problematic cards, or two tax strikes, or whatever. Again, mentioned why we were running Blitzkriegs, sort of the core card of the deck. And then we reach sort of, the, like, by this point, you can see I probably made, like, a 30-card deck and was like, this seems good. Now I'm out of cards, so let's start putting in the iron from the north, putting in the tax strikes, just need to go up to hit that 40 mark. When you have a low collection, 40 cards seems like a lot. And then when you have a full collection, 40 cards seems like it's absolutely nothing, and you wish you could run 60, but, um, yeah. So, threw in some air blitzes. Again, the honey did not exist, Marinostrum did not exist, there was almost no healing in the game. Um, and the healing that was in the game, people thought was bad and didn't really run it. So, 
there was basically no healing. So if you could get a Blitzkrieg off, it doesn't matter if your opponent still has 6 health, because maybe you draw into Air Blitzes over the next couple turns. Air Blitz used to deal 4 damage. It cost 4, deals 4. Um, so in a game with no healing, 4k deal 4, pretty good. Honestly, it probably should have been running 3 at the expense of like an Iron from the north. Uh, then we had Comet and Blitzkrieg, er, Bismarck. Now, part of the reason I was running these is likely because they were like some of the only elites I had, and I was like, I have a limited collection, I might as well run all my elites, because they're good. Uh, and two, they just sort of fit into this, like, you lose the front line, your opponent's slamming down, like, Gren guards or whatever, and you just finish them off with Bismarck or Comet, because again, limited healing. Um, so yeah, this deck is sucks. This deck is terrible. Um, obviously it could high roll basically anything, um, but not a great deck. Now, let's look at the air deck. Uh, this is at 37 cards. I'll say what the three missing ones are after we sh see what is here. So, at first you might think, oh, pretty familiar. Swordfishes, three swordfish, three gladiator, air. Um, two recons. So, lend lease did not exist, so you were significantly more limited on card draw options. Um, and, as you will see with these four close air supports, close air support used to be very different. Close air support used to be give a friendly unit plus one plus one for each uh, British air unit you control. So you could give it to an air unit, or you could play it on recon, which would then get the buff. So if you could buff this recon up to like a 3-4 or a 5-6, um, or like a 4-5, Suddenly you're drawing a quite a few more cards off of this, and in a game with very limited card draw for most nations, um, that was a big deal. Also, Recon used to be a 1-3, now I'm pretty sure that was before they changed that before this tournament, I'm pretty sure I was still running this as a 1-2, but if it was a 1-3, that card was busted and like should be run in every single deck. Um, now, a couple other cards, Monty... Monty is Monty. It actually used to be stronger. If you're newer, you might not know this. Monty used to be just pin all enemy units, draw a card. Now you only draw if it pins three or more. Um, for the Emperor, another absolutely insane card. Uh, it used to just not have the restriction on Japanese units, so this would buy you a ton of credits, buff a ton of uh, attack. Uh, this is especially good with like HMS Illustrious. For the Emperor, you're now hitting with two, two attack, zero operation cost bombers. Um, Airsop, is Airsop, it's sort of like the core card of Japan Ally Air, Albacore, Kitty Hawk, these are all the same. Um, Ultra, this is really funny, this is something I remember quite distinctly. Every single air deck ran MI5 and Convoys, because there was no land leases again. And like, there wasn't a lot of card draw in opponents' decks either, so it wasn't necessarily about drawing all of your cards to consistently hit everything, but like, if you're playing MI5, your opponent is just, like, has less answers, and, like, it doesn't matter if your opponent's slam and Gren guides, if you just, like, have a couple swordfish in the f support line that it takes them forever to deal with, you're probably gonna win. Um, so yeah, three convoy, two MI5, and then we see the weird cards. Two Amphibious Assault, now this was just a pretty good card. Um, it, it, was, it was just a good card. Um, three pre Precision Bombings, I th believe I know the reason why these are here. I don't necessarily think this was correct. Um, precision bombing used to cost three, though, so that is worth noting. This was three cost, so it's significantly better than at four cost. Um, then Raph Lightning obviously used to be a three five, and Mosquito was the same. Um, Mosquito actually used to cost five, and uh, Kitty Hawk used to be a two four. Now, I believe both of these were changed before the World Championship, but just like if you want that deep lore. Uh, cards balance patch. Honestly, that sounds like a really fun video idea, just going back through the balance patch, like the old balance patches, and see the most ludicrous changes. Um, now, the reason I'm running these precision bombings, and something you probably will have noticed if you are used to playing against air, is I am not running Empire Strikes. Now, this is likely because I did not own the card. Uh, again, had very limited collection. It is also possible that this was before Empire Strikes was good, because Empire Strikes used to not have the one plus number of bombers, it used to just be equal to the number of bombers, which is significantly worse. Um, like, significantly worse. Now, is it worth running? Probably? 
Um, I think people probably underestimated the potential of that card. However, it was significantly weaker. Um, and Precision Bombing, often you would just win games with your bombers, because there was so many decks that just could literally could not answer a buffed bomber. Like, the, the answers to bombers were Carpet Bombing, but if you get a uh, close air support on that, it's not dying to Carpet Bombing. And Amphibious Assault, but if you get that to 4-6... Uh, it's not dying to that. And, like, Avenger B17, <laughs> which it costs 8 and 9, well, 7 and 9 at the time. Um, and, yeah, the number one way to counter them is people brand, like, Zeros, uh, Raph Lightning was a really popular one, um, P40 in US decks. Again, you could mix and match with Elites, so Shiden was in a lot of decks. Uh, so Precision Bombing at 3 cost just made sense. Now, the three missing cards in this deck, and I think this is by far my best deck, um, probably a little bit too much single target removal. Um, you could already see this is sort of my playstyle, I really like single target removal. Um, like the US France deck I popularized is literally just entirely single target removal. Uh, the Night Witch's deck was like 90% single target removal. This is like an aggro air deck, and I'm still running like five copies of single target removal because why not? Um, the three missing cards are three Japanese elites. Uh, you have Bombing Raid, which, like, let's be honest, if bombing if you could do that now, people would run Bombing Raid in air. It's just a really good card. Uh, it used to cost three. I'm not certain if it cost three at the time of this tournament. It might have already been bumped up to four, but, I mean, everybody runs it today at four, so you can imagine what people did with that card at three. Um, I ran Shiden because, you know, you're running an air deck. Of course you run Shiden. Um, and I ran Pete, the 2-2 uh, two -two untargetable bomber, because, again, people ran very, very little uh, removal. So, like, oftentimes you could just stick a Pete and your opponent, like, could not do anything to it, and then you start buffing it with Cassas to get it at a Carpet Bomb range, and it was amazing. Now, the two other cards, well, one other card, I should say, that you're probably wondering why it's not here, is Finest Hour. Did people think this card used to be bad? No. This card was always good. Um, obviously, the, the most recent change is now 1-1 one, one in Blitz. However... This is a special. So again, this is just a card I didn't own. Um, part of the reason I'm probably running Amphibious Assaults. So you've really seen my limited collection uh, <laughs> coming through here. Now we get to my ramp deck. Um, this was my pride and joy. Uh, sort of at this point, the expensive decks were just like a Britain US ramp or US Britain ramp with like all the elites. And they weren't necessarily good, but they were the end-all be-all of control decks, and they were a ton of fun. So this was my attempt at making a ramp deck with the cards I had available. Now, Jasko, obviously. Uh, three Awoken Giants. This is because just, there was a ton of aggro, and because there was so limited card draw, you could really easily run... Like, there's so limited card draw and limited removal, you could really easily run dead cards against certain matchups. And then still win because you're, like, the deck playing B17s and, well, your opponent's playing, like, three drops. Um, so, triple Awoken Giant, probably still too much, but, like, it, shockingly well. Um, I, I don't know how well it would have worked, but I think it's safe to say this would have worked way better than if you ran triple Awoken Giants now, because, obviously, every card matters way more, so running three cards that are potentially dead is pretty bad. Um, four War Machines... Three milk trucks. This card had just come out. I remember that. Uh, three gunships. This is just sort of like I need early game and C fourth and East Surrey regiment don't exist yet. Um, you're really not getting guards until you're slamming Gren guards. Um, Black Watch cost four, but it was a one four guard, so it's not that great. Um, P forty used to cost or P forty used to have four health. And this card was hilarious, because if you did War Machine into P40, with how little removal was in the game, you just instantly won. Like, you just straight up immediately won the game on turn 3, like, 80% of the time, if you could play a turn 3 P40. Um, this was one of the most busted cards in the game. And then I ran two copies of Rescue Mission. This card used to cost 3, um, rather than 4, 
And again, this is sort of like that you don't have a ton of draw, so would you rather run Convoy, three cost, draw two? Or would you rather have Rescue Mission, three cost, give yourself two extra B-17s against an opponent who runs no removal? <laughs> Turns out B-17s are pretty good. Um, mobilization, again, this is, was the biggest card draw in the game outside of Empire of the Sun, um, because there's no lend leases, there's no five-year plans. Um, I guess Enigma could theoretically draw more. Uh, 101st Airborne, just nuts card, War Bonds, again, this is sort of card draw. Uh, Arrow for Need doesn't exist yet, so this is the big ramp cards. Uh, Grand Guard, Strap Bombing, Carpet Bombing. Um, and then you have B-17 Avenger, this card used to cost seven. Um, two Flying Fortresses, Potion, and you ran Potion because, again, almost nobody ran Hard Removal unless they were another ramp deck. Um, so, like, if you just played Potion against, like, a Japan deck or an Air deck, well, not against me because I ran Precision Bombings because I'm a lunatic, um, but often they, you just had the time to play Potion, and, like, if you got Potion to the front line, you would actually just win a lot of matchups because... It's not just like heavily refined, capable of answering these threats at decks. They would just immediately lose to Persian because they're like, oh, my, suddenly my Bismarcks and my Comets don't kill you anymore. It's it's game over. Um, now, obviously, there's a couple elites missing uh, that you might wonder why I'm not running, such as Air Defense. I would be running that card if I owned it. It's an elite. I don't have it. I was poor. Um, now, you might be wondering where the other six cards are, and if you learned anything from the last deck, it's because they are all elites, and Britain had some of the best elites in the game. So, uh, I can tell you right now what the missing elites are. There is Monty, because Monty. Um, imagine being able to run Monty in minor nations. You would see Britain ally way more. Um, the, I had the 85 Pioneer Company, which is the uh, zero 04 reduce the cost of orders. Uh, this was before it was reduced the cost of orders to a minimum of one. It used to just be reduced the cost of orders, so orders could get reduced to one. Um, other than Monty and Awoken Giants, that wouldn't have had a huge impact on this deck in particular, but that is worth remembering. Pioneer Company used to be even more broken, and it's already, like, one of the single most powerful cards in the game. Um, and the other four... Sorry, I'm, like, reading this off the deck list because obviously I couldn't import it in. The Lancaster B3, which is the uh, 7 cost 5-4. I suppose I can just pull these up. Um, show it off more easily. So you have Monty. You have the 85 Pioneer Company. You have Lancaster B3. Uh, this card used to actually be even better. It used to increase the cost of cards in enemy's hand by plus two credits rather than plus one credit. Um, so again, just ramp was so much fun. I think this... Everything I'm telling you now, it should get the point across that ramp is a ton of fun. Um, and then, of course, I had Kitty Hawk. This card was just really good uh, in a format with significantly less removal. Same reason I ran Mosquito. Again, just really good card. Um, and last but not least, I had... Oh, yes. Of course. I had Ultra. Now, this is another card which I think you would just see played in way more decks, and you would see Britain chosen as an ally nation way more if you could run Elites. Um, that's actually, like, an interesting topic of, like, uh, was this a good move? Um, obviously the move was intended to just make top-level decks less reliant on owning every single elite in the game. Um, because obviously, think about Jagro. Oh my goodness, you had access to Bismarck and Comet, uh, in Jagro? Like, you could, like, literally even just run, like, if you really wanted to, you could run just, like, um, Shiden in basically any decks. Uh, the deck that ended up winning World Championship was a Britain-Japan, uh, Commonwealth Commandos deck that ran Commonwealth as the main win condition. However, if you couldn't heal up to 30 or if your opponent healed past 20, you also just ran Last Rites in the deck to win on Fatigue, or you ran Last Rites and then you just threw out a bunch of Commandos and played uh, all eight Last Rites because the Kamikazes used to cost zero, so you could play them all out on the same turn uh, and just burn your opponent down with Commandos. The deck was incredibly multifaceted, and it heavily, heavily relied on elites of both... Uh, ally nations, uh, both 
nations, like the ally and the major. Um, and obviously it was broken. It was probably the best deck in the game, um, which is probably why the guy who figured out how to make it and play it the best won the World Championship in 2019. Um, so... These are my three decks. Uh, if I had to rate them, I would probably say the air deck looked really good. Um, I could see the ramp deck being very strong as well. Um, it is difficult to think. Uh, and like the German deck is definitely the definitely the weak one here. Um, and honestly, I think these decks probably were pretty good compared to what some of the other people were bringing. Um, but, again, feel free to check me on that. I have the uh, document with all 128 players' decks, um, three decks each, uh, which I will link in the description. So if you want to take a look through other people's decks, um, some special names out there. Gearbot was the player who ended up winning the 2019 World Championship. I might cover his lineup in a future video. Um, GK Zukov. Uh, was the runner-up. Uh, Fenrir got third, Drogir got fourth. Um, Cybernetic was also, uh, I think he got like eighth. Um, he was one of the people a lot of people expected to see in the finals. Um, so yeah, I would recommend going to, uh, going to see those players to see more, uh, more decks of the time. <laughs> decks built with slightly larger collections. Although GK Zukov actually had a very limited collection as well. Um, and yeah, I'll only play one game on ladder, I think, um, just because two of them are unplayable, and I think it, with just how old these decks are, it really defeats the purpose running the deck today. Um, so I'll only run the German-Soviet deck for a game. Uh, this was a pretty talking-heavy episode, and I think that's fine, because these decks are significantly more theoretical with just how old they are and just how many card di change differences there have been since these cards existed. Um... So, uh, yeah, uh, let's just play the German-Soviet deck, see how it compares, see how the uh, reliability holds up, um, and more likely than not, see why I lost with this deck in the top 16. Um, yeah, and let me know in the future if you'd be interested in seeing um, sort of breakdowns of gameplay. Um, like, I can find old videos of gameplay, uh, old tournaments. Oh. 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 <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. This is rough. This is pretty rough. Am I about to get beefed? No beef. Yeah, this deck is nuts. He doesn't even know what's coming for him. This was also... I believe this was before Greif. Because Greif was a uh, Allegiance card. The first major... Uh, well, the first card's expansion. Um, always Japan Soviet, actually. Oh, this is... This is just embarrassing. <laughs> um, this is going to be one rough loss. This guy's probably so confused as to what I'm playing. Um, okay. This game is so over. Probably shouldn't have played the 22nd, actually. Um... Probably should have just held on to it, because maybe he doesn't take the front line, and then I can draw, like, another Blitz unit to move up. But uh, he's an aggro deck. There's, like, an 100% chance he takes the front line. Let's try to take out the caddy. Honestly, maybe I should have sickled the Mido. Just because, like, with the way this hand is looking up... If I could, like, hit even a single Blitzkrieg, maybe... Like, sorry, if I can take the front line for, like, a single turn, maybe I, there's a win in there. Um. <laughs> I 
Okay. Alrighty. I think it's safe to call in the towel here. My god, when it works, it works. When it does not work, it really does not work. Um, honestly, I, I'm kind of curious why I didn't bring a Japan aggro deck. Cause Japan has a lot of standard cards, standard and limited cards that work really well together, obviously. Um, and is probably just more consistent than this. Hit him with the well played and hit him with the turn 8 surrender. Really? He hit me with the ZZZ after I surrendered? Is he mad I didn't surrender faster? Is he mad that I'm playing Blitzkriegs? I'm I'm lost. Um I will actually I was thinking, um I'm just kinda curious how this ramp deck holds up, just because it's like so old fashioned. Like you're running rescue missions in here, and I'm really curious how these Awoken Giants are going to work. So, um, what's, like, a good balance of cards to run to replace the British elites? Um, there's not really a replacement for Monty. Um, I suppose I can run 5th Rangers as, like, a quasi-Kitty Hawk. Um, maybe a P-47 as a quasi-mosquito. Um, Lancaster's pretty difficult to replace. Although, with how I built this deck, let me just search up Elite. Um, throw in an air defense, because why not? Uh, I, I think a card like the research is kind of too, too busted, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, let's just throw in a B-17F. Um, probably worse, significantly worse than Lancaster. Um, Pioneer Company is another one that's pretty hard to replace. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll just run Seaforth, I guess. It's sort of like a Monty-esque. And then, eh, Monty-esque in that, like, it can sometimes make aggro turn, aggro players just waste a turn. Although I suppose it kills them. Which is a pretty big benefit. Uh, and then Ultra. I mean, that, that one's pretty easy. It's just throwing a doubting system. This deck is terrible. Um, but <laughs> I am just really curious how it holds up with rescue missions. Uh, and then I, I don't think I'll play the air deck. I mean, it's pretty funny with precision bombings and amphibious assault. But one, it's just probably the one that ages the worst. Um, just because of how many cards in the deck have been nerfed. Uh, and just how much draw has become available. And two, we have seen a lot of air and a lot of forms. Oh my goodness, I'm going to get the turn 3 P40. It's over. Oh, into war uh, mobilization. I'm going to, like, immediately get hit by a... Uh, actually, it, it, oh, if it's going to be self-damage, and now it dies to uh, Red Dawn. This is going to be really sad. This is gonna just be like a, oh yeah, this is 2022 when every card is absolutely busted compared to cards from 2019. Although ironically, this card actually used to be better. He can't kill it. Okay. Things are about to get real. Um, do I draw, do I hit face, or do I hold up a rescue mission? <laughs> Probably not holding up rescue mission. Let's draw. I need to get some more ramp going. Or I need Pershing B-17. That, that works too. No complaints. Um, please let him spend three credits moving up to trigger my Awoken Giant. No. Okay. 
All right. Um. Yeah. I think I'm gonna hold on to the gunship mission just because I want to trigger a woken giant. It's adventure time. Oh my god, dude, this Awoken Giant's about to be nuts. Oh, he did parade into train. That's sad. Yo, look at this, look at this. Normally, I would just play Avenger, and then he would kill the P-40, but wait! If only there was a one credit card that kills a unit in the front line! And it draws! The crowd goes wild. Actually, just... Is strap bombing? Strap bombing seems significantly better. It keeps train alive for a turn, I guess. Um... Man, am I gonna get partisanced? This would be a pretty... Oh, wait, he can't because of the credit loss. Ho ho ho. What's he gonna do? All your frickin' uh, fancy new cards, your researches, won't save you. What? What? Ex excuse me. Um. This guy's cheating. <laughs> that is some garbage. Uh, let's just take out the train, kill this, go face. I do think I would like two additional P-40s. Thank you very much. You could also do Winter Offensive. That's a possibility. Okay, Winter Offensive, I got two P-40s. I mean... This doesn't actually do a whole lot. I'm gonna hold back. By holding back, I'm able to get up to uh, 16 credits in one turn, which means Persian f face becomes a viable option. Uh, he does have to respond to what's on board, which is pretty easy if he can pull a uh, first rifles or a third armored train. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's nine operation. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, well, tough luck, buddy. But it's Avenging Time. Oh my, this deck is beastly. I don't actually remember playing this deck, like, at all. Maybe I just thought this deck was bad. Maybe all my opponents were playing aggro. I don't know. This deck is beastly. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's it for this week's Throwback Thursday. Again, if you have any ideas for decks or lineups or anything, eras in history, players, that you want to see next week, um, let me know in the comments down below, and uh, the next video will be breaking down the top six, how it went, did I qualify or did I not qualify, um, and uh, how did the other five players do. If you want to uh, follow me on Twitch, link is in the description, I just did a stream earlier today where I hit Field Marshal, uh, played some pretty fun off-meta decks that worked out pretty well. Uh, and posted quite a few deck lists of mine in that stream chat. You can also join my Discord, where I will also post deck lists if you ask or answer any other questions, or you can just, you know, discuss with other people uh, about cards or anything you want. It's a pretty thriving community. And uh, thank you again for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Do the YouTube things. You know the drill by now. And I'll catch you in the next one.